For today in automotive history, July the 29th. In 1899, the Automobile Company of America officially adopted Locomobile as its trade name. In 1909, the Buick Motor Company acquired Cadillac Motor Company on behalf of General Motors for $4.5 million. Cadillac was born from the ashes of the Henry Ford Company, a business organized by William Murphy to produce a car by Henry Ford. I think that Ford guy did okay. In 1916, Samuel B. Stevens and four relief drivers arrived in San Francisco in their Marmon 34, broke the trans-United States record recently set by Cannonball Baker by 41 hours. It must have been that was recently set by Cannonball Baker. And I wonder if that's where the Cannonball Run name comes from. I bet that is correct. In 1934, Mercedes and Auto Union teams withdrew from the Belgian Grand Prix after Customs asked the teams to pay 180,000, not dollars, BFs. I don't know what BFs are in Europe. On their alcohol-based fuel. I'm assuming that's a lot of money. So if someone wants to tell me how much 180,000 BFs are, I'd appreciate it. British francs? Belgium for ah, Belgium francs. I bet that's what it is. In 1951, the Triple A Sprint Car Championship got underway at Winchester Speedway in Indiana. Shout out to my mom who was born in Winchester. The first driver out for qualifying was Judge Cecil Holt, who raced under the name Cecil Green. The Texas-born Green was a high school dropout that worked as a car mechanic. In 1954, Franz Joseph Pop was one of three men responsible for the founding of BMW AG and the first general director of BMW AG from 1922 to 1942, and unfortunately he passed away in 1954. In 1959, groundbreaking ceremonies for the new Charlotte Motor Speedway took place during, on a sultry summer morning. The new speedway was built by Chris Turner and Bruton Smith, and the first race was scheduled for May of 1960. In 1966, Bob Dylan was severely injured in a motorcycle accident near his home in Woodstock, New York. I wonder if he ever rode a motorcycle again. That would be interesting to know. In 1990, a big gap there from 1966 to 1990, the last Formula One Grand Prix to be held in West Germany prior to his reunification with East Germany was won by 1988 world champion Senna driving a McLaren MP4-5B. In 1993, Ford's one millionth vehicle fitted with dual airbags rolled off the Atlanta assembly plant line. In 2000, the British Conservative Party organized a day of protest to draw attention to how fuel prices had increased under the Labour government. In 2001, the longest ever horizontal power slide in a car of 2 hours, 11 minutes, and 18 seconds was performed at the Wet Grip Circle at the MIRA Proving Grounds in the UK. I think I had the longest drift a couple weeks ago. Now we have the longest power slide. What records are there left to be broken, people? All right, in 2002, the 10 millionth North American-made Toyota. Now let me say that again. The 10 millionth North American-made Toyota. Wow, that's a lot. Rolled off the line at Toyota's Kentucky plant. Special events were held across the continent to celebrate. 15 years and 10 months since the first Toyota brand vehicle, the Corolla FX, was made in North America in September of 1986 at NUMMI, New United Motor Manufacturing, Inc., a joint venture with General Motors in California. Now, that is in Georgetown, Kentucky. If you've never toured the Toyota plant in Georgetown, Kentucky, I highly recommend you do. You can do that and then do the Bourbon Trail. The tour takes about an hour. You have to schedule ahead, but it's free, and you ride on this long tram through the entire factory and it's actually the largest Toyota production facility in the world so it's definitely worth the trip it made me want to buy a Camry that's all I gotta say in 2007 Tony Stewart won his second Allstate 400 at the Brickyard over runner-up Juan Pablo Montoya the 2000 Indianapolis 500 champion Montoya became the first driver to participate in three major racing events at IMS the Indianapolis 500 the United States Grand Prix and the Allstate 400 at the Brickyard. In 2011, President Barack Obama and the automobile manufacturers announced a deal designed to save American drivers money at the pump and dramatically cut heat-trapping gases coming from tailpipes. The agreement required cars and light trucks to achieve an average fuel economy of 54.5 miles per gallon by 2025 to achieve an average fuel economy of 54.5 miles per gallon by 2025. Hence, everybody switching to electric cars. <laughs> And that is it for today in automotive history. As always, thanks to 365daysofmotoring.com for this information, and thanks for tuning in. And I will talk to all of you next week. Thanks for listening to the Collector Car Podcast. Don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes, and be sure to follow us on Instagram and everywhere else at the Collector Car Podcast.